Okay, I think everything is set up, and I think I'm recording. Yep, yeah, I'm recording. That's a good start. How are you doing, everyone? So, let's talk about my Sony camera and why I went to Sony. Why did I make the change from Canon? And I've got to go back quite a long time for this. So, when I was about 16, 17, I lost a family member, and they left me a little bit of money. And because, you know, been at a younger age back then, I was using, like, flip phone cameras all the time. I don't know what it was. I was just obsessed about walking around with this flip phone and taking pictures. And it tended to be of my friends or of people and stuff. It was just a bit, to be honest, it was a bit annoying for my friends because I'd just walk around and take pictures all the time and they got quite annoyed with it. However, when I got that money in, I started doing a bit of research and I walked into a Curry's and I was looking at the cameras and I thought, do you know what I really want to get? I want to get one of these DSLRs. I hadn't done enough research because I bought an entry level straight away. I could have probably got something a little bit better, but I bought an entry level uh, Canon 1000D, quite an old camera now, and took it home, unboxed it, and I was like, oh my god, what do I do with this? How do I even turn it on? So I spent the next few months learning how to actually use the camera, its interface, all the main sort of features, the basic stuff, more importantly, how to get away from auto and start using manual, and in order, I'm tapping speed today, in all of that, in all of that, in order to do that, I actually followed a guy on YouTube called Carl Taylor and he did some really good tips, tricks, hints, and sort of lessons on photography, and more importantly, the fundamentals of photography, like lighting, the actual camera usage, so shutter speed, and aperture, and all that sort of stuff. And I started picking up quite fast, and I started just practicing, walking around the house, taking pictures of, of plants, of, I'd, I'd put a plant on a newspaper and take a picture of it to try and sort of see if I'm picking up depth of field, and. I took some really bad photographs back then, and I thought they were brilliant. Uh, as you can probably see on the screen, I'll put a few up, and I just thought these were amazing. However, looking back, they were, yeah. I mean, I was starting out. So I started to really pick up the camera, and at one point I actually went, so my dad paid for me to go and do a shoot at, what is it now? I think it was Howarth, 1940s weekend. He, he paid this photographer to take me under his wing and teach me how to take pictures, essentially, of people. It was more or less like a street photography day for me. So we were just walking around, taking pictures of all the reenactors, people, that sort of thing. And I, I just started to really enjoy taking pictures of people. That sounds weird, doesn't it? When I got back from there, I actually started practicing with my friends. So I got a couple of friends who were, you know, on the better looking side of things because, you know, they always used to get the ladies and I didn't. And I started asking them if they could just model for me and just, you know, pose for me and that sort of thing. I started to, you know, really pick up the basics with it and started to think about, like, the rule of thirds, use of foreground and background, that sort of thing. But I still had the kit lens and I still had my 1000D. So eventually I bought a 50mm, uh, the F1.8 uh, version, and it was great. I just really enjoyed using it. It was nifty 50, you know, it was plastic, but it did a really good job and I was... Some of the stuff I was getting, I really personally liked at the time. If I looked back now, I'd probably be like, oh my god. Especially the fact that on most of my photographs, I used to do that typical signature at the bottom. Just don't do that. Never, never, never do that. Anyway, fly forward a good few years. I've done a few jobs here and there, just very low paid, that sort of thing. Did a couple of weddings. And I went to university and I actually sold all my camera gear. And I did that because I wanted to party. I was I was skin at university and I wanted to party. So I sold all my cam Canon gear. It went. And I was kind of upset doing it. I do kind of regret it still because I could have taken the camera to university and got some work through it, you know. But I didn't. I made that mistake. So don't make that mistake. Take your camera with you if you're going to uni, college, whatever. Because there might be opportunities there. And there would have been. Anyway, fast forward... Fast forward to my third year, and I used to have a bursary, so this bursary essentially gave you money and you could only use it in the shop, typical. So I went onto the online shop and I started seeing cameras, and I found a 1-1000D. Uh, was it a 1-1000D or a 1-100? One 1-1000? One that doesn't make sense, does it? 1100. 1100D. Yeah. So I bought it, and it turned up, unboxed it, started playing around with it. Didn't really use it much. Don't know what it was. My passion just, because of the partying and the just boozing it up, I just sort of started focusing on other things. Big regret. 
However, you know, I played with it here and there, used it for some parties, that sort of thing. Fly forward again, I get into my career and two years into it, I don't know what it was, I woke up after a payday and I just went, I need to get back into photography. And I started realising that my passion was coming back, I just didn't have the systems for it. So I went on Amazon and I started looking for used cameras or refurbed cameras and I found the camera that I'd always wanted as a youngster. You know, I used to see Carl Taylor using it, I used to see many other photographers using it, especially for portraiture weddings, and that was the Canon 5D Mark II. Old as... It was just old. I mean, it might as well have been Victorian and made of wood, but brilliant camera. It was a full-frame camera and I loved it. It turned up, I bought a nice little Canon F1.4 50, and I loved it. I was just going around, practicing again, starting to pick it up, starting to speak to people who could potentially just practice modeling for me. And then I, I, then I did something quite crazy. Another payday comes in, and I actually bought the 85mm f1.2, USM2. It was a big lens, but I always wanted an 85, and I got it. And it was absolutely brilliant. I loved that lens. Used it a lot, started getting good jobs, started really getting back into it. And then I fell into the trap, and most of you Sony shooters are going to know what I'm going to say. I started watching a lot of YouTube, following a lot of portrait photographers, street photographers, and all of them were using Sony. And I just thought, I'd heard about Sony in the camera world, I knew they were up and coming and they were smashing it at the moment, but I just thought, I've never, you know, I've never had a Sony camera, I've never tried it, I'd, what would I expect? But I kept watching a guy called Manny Ortiz, and eventually I was like, no, I've, I've got to get it. His work is unbelievably brilliant. And I thought, do you know what? I like the way this camera works. I like the look of it. And I think you put that in my hands and I, get, I can get some good work with it. So without even selling my camera, uh, current camera gear at the time, I just bought a Sony and this is it. So I bought the Sony A7R3. Now, some people are probably thinking, why didn't you just get the A3? I wanted the R because of the actual photography side of it. I didn't really want a hybrid camera. I wanted a pure photography level camera. And I got it. And I, I actually got it with a Sony 50mm thinking it's going to be as good as a Canon 50mm. It's not. I definitely wouldn't recommend the F1.8 Sony. If you're going to get the 50, you're going to have to splash the cash and get the better option. Or save a little bit more money and buy the Zeiss 55 because that thing is a beast. And even though I've got this, I still want to get a Carl Zeiss. 55. So I got it and I started learning it. It took me a little while, you know, to settle from one camera system to a new one, but I really enjoyed it. I'm not sure what it was about the Sony system, but the interface, everything, just picking it up, the way it felt, I loved it. And I was just going out and shooting, doing street photography where I could, but I realized that I missed having an 85. And in order to get one, I actually sold all my Canon stuff. I didn't get anywhere near as much as I'd paid for it, especially the, the 85. But I sold it all, so I got the 85 f1.4 GM. Now if you ever see a GM on a Sony lens, it's going to be expensive, but it is worth it. You can get a Sony f1.8 version of the 50, uh, 85, sorry, which is actually sharper. However, I don't know what it is, but this lens just brings out brilliance. It just, the portraits I get with this, I really enjoy. And the 50 is the f1.8 um, version of the 85 is really good. You know, it's like I say, it's sharper, which is strange. But this gives a bit of a softer feel to it, a softer complexion. And I think it's perfect for portraiture, wedding photography, fashion, brand shoots, that sort of stuff. So definitely look into an 85 if you're going to um, go down the Sony route. And the best bit is the f1.4 version is coming down in price quite significantly. Next up, you know, I'm, I'm, so I've been using this system a while and I was like, right, I'm gonna get a few more lenses. So I bought a 35mm f1.8, very, very good lens. Definitely recommend that one. It's great for street photography and you get some pretty all right uh, portraits from it in general. So yeah, then I made a huge decision. This is about a year ago now. So this lens hasn't been out too long. And I bought the 70 to 200 GM2. I might as well have sold my kidney and everything in my life other than my camera to get this because this cost me a lot of money. Do I regret it? No. I do not regret it because it's my passion and I love it and I'd rather invest in it in my passion than just spend it on booze. Sometimes, sometimes. So 
Why did I get all this kit? And how do I feel about it? Changing from Canon to Sony was the best decision I've made as a photographer because I love how small the camera bodies are. For Sony, I love the lenses. I think the lenses are fantastic. And I'm not taking any, anything away from Canon. They're a fantastic brand and it's the only other brand that I'd shoot with. However, a lot of people will say that Sony's colour science isn't as good as Canon's. I agree and disagree, but I've never had any issues with Sony itself. I think the ISO levels you get out of these cameras are fantastic. The lens quality, the build of the cameras, everything about it I really enjoy. And the best bit is I can pack all this stuff into my backpack with ease. Back when I had a Canon and I had my battery grip, I mean that thing took up more or less my whole bag anyway. So it depends what you want and it depends what you like. And if you are thinking of changing, the one thing I would recommend massively is just try out the cameras before you do it because I rushed into it, I'd never picked up a Sony and it took me a little bit to learn and who knows, I might not have enjoyed it when I got it and then I've already got it and I'm like, oh no. So definitely try and test out whatever brand you're gonna go to. But Sony is a brilliant brand and the stuff they're coming out with is fantastic and for me, I'm sorry for anyone who's not a Sony shooter, you're gonna hate me for saying this, I do believe they have, this is my personal opinion, Okay, do not smash me in the comments for this. I do believe they've got the best lenses in the game right now. Some people will say, well, what about Canon's RF version of this? The one thing I'd say about this, that, is at least with this lens, it is just one set lens. It doesn't come out and come in. It's not got... Oh, God, I can't talk today. It's not got... Oh, I need a coffee. It's not got that external system coming out and coming in, which could potentially cause wear and tear in the future. This is just an inbuilt, one set lens, one tube, essentially. Uh, I'm talking like a bit of a tube, aren't I? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, for me, Sony has been a very, very good shout. So, in summary, yeah, if you're gonna go to Sony, definitely do it, but just give it a try first. Some of the lenses they're coming out with are, are fantastic. They've got a new 85, they've got really good 50 mils coming out, and other various lenses. And frankly, if you do portraiture, if you do fashion brand shoots, weddings, travel photography, street photography, Sony right now are killing it. And I'm obviously this video is, you know, I'm nowhere near getting sponsored off Sony. I wish I was, but I'm nowhere near that. One day, one day, all right? But I would definitely recommend it for those type of shooters because it gives you so much good access. It gives you good, easy to use, small systems, good compact lenses, and a good range of stuff. I know some people are worried about Sony, thinking that other brands have been, been doing it far, far longer, which they have, and there's not as much stuff out there for Sony. They are catching up ridiculously fast, believe you me. Will I upgrade my a7R 3 Next year. So I'm gonna upgrade my a7R 3 next year for the next version of this. I think it's like the a7R 4B or A. I know the first R4 that came out had issues, and it's the one after that that I want to get. Or, I might just go crazy and get the uh, A1. Or maybe the A9, is it A9? Yeah, that just depends if I have a midlife crisis and think I need to do this. But, this camera's gonna last me a long, long time, and these are, these are coming down in price. You have got other options if you want to save money, you could get the Alpha Series, so the A7s. Um, which are cheaper, they're more of a hybrid style camera, but if you're pure photography, you want to be looking at the R's. If you do videography, you want to be looking at the S's, so the um, A7S3s and stuff, but they are ridiculous money. I've actually been thinking about getting an A7S3, but I'm not a videographer, I just like to dip in and out every now and then. Maybe one day, if I can find one cheap enough, but they are ridiculous. So yeah, that is why I went to Sony. I, yeah, more or less uh, just went, do you know what? I'm going to believe everything that YouTube says. So, don't believe everything I'm saying. Test it out for yourself. Get a hands-on practice and see how far you get. I hope you enjoyed this little daily vlog. I'll keep trying to get them out. It's just a bit hard at the minute. Hopefully, we're getting the drone out on Saturday. Saturday is the day for the drone. So, I'm getting the DJI Avata out, as well as the Mavic Air 2. I'm going to fly it around. We'll see what it's about. Because I haven't actually used it yet, the Avata. So, it's going to be a really good day. Looking forward to it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe because this is a new channel and I'm really trying to grow the channel out there. Right, um, I need a coffee, so I don't even know why I have my laptop here. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll see you in. The oh my god, that's on the floor. I'll see you in the next one.